Hi there. A very warm welcome to those of you joining our Easter Sunday baptism service. Happy Easter. We are going to be having baptism this morning. We are going to be looking at the wonder of Jesus being risen and shown communion. And if you are here uh, because you are wanted to support uh, Emma, Melissa or Natalie, uh, then you're especially welcome. And if you're joining us either live or afterwards, uh, it is great to have you with us. We're going to be here for about an hour and a quarter. It's going to be chaos in a wonderful way. Um, and so hopefully you can just roll with it. There's going to be singing, there's going to be praying, uh, there's going to be hearing uh, from the Bible and um, obviously the baptisms as well. So um, we're going to be kicking off very soon. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Bless you. Well, good morning, everybody, and a happy Easter to you. It is great to have you with us. Well done for, for making it on time. Um, well done for changing your clocks or that they automatically change that you've not realized, and you're just wondering why you're feeling a little bit more sleepy. Um, but it is great to have you with us this morning. Um, if you are new, if you've not been here for a while, if you are here to, um, to support our baptism candidates, um, then you are really welcome. I love that you've already got the vibe this morning that it's going to be a bit of holy chaos. It's fine to have, you know, we're going to have the little ones in with us. I actually think it's the older ones that are making more noise right now, but that's, uh, we're just going to roll with that. This is a celebration. Uh, Jesus Christ is risen, and it is wonderful uh, to be with you. And we're going to be here for about sort of an hour, an hour and a quarter or so. We're going to be singing some songs. We are going to be um, baptizing and reaffirming the baptism vows of Emma, Melissa, and Natalie. Um, so, yeah, we can give a round of applause for that already. It's so exciting. If you've not seen the, the cake, uh, or the cakes um, celebrating that, then please do make sure you uh, try and see that before they get cut up, but we will be enjoying that at the end. Um, and we have uh, the tomb here, which those of you who are here on Good Friday will know a little bit about. Um, we all um, helped to sort of add uh, our plots to that. This has been created by the Wellbeing and Wonder Group, um, and so Mel's going to be explaining a little bit about that later if you're wondering about that. But for those who were here on Good Friday, we were doing Stations of the Cross and connecting um, the suffering of Christ with the persecuted church because you may not know but in many places across the world it is dangerous to be a Christian. It is, um, they, they fear for their lives and they often have to hide away. And so we want to stand by them today and we want to uh, honour them, pray for them um, but also celebrate that we are able to be here in safety um, but there is, a, there is a, a, the 15th station, so we have 14 on Good Friday, and the 15th one is here, um, Resurrection. Um, and these are, there's secret baptisms that are going to be held all across the world today um, in different places. They might not quite have the, the hot uh, pool that we have, um, but they will be being baptised. And so if you get a chance afterwards to, to read that, 
and sort of finish the journey that we've been on. Because um, it's incredible because Easter Sunday doesn't happen without Good Friday. Um, and so we celebrate that today, but we always hold in our mind um, that, that Christ suffered um, for us so that we could be uh, washed clean so that we could be new people in him. And that's what we're celebrating in baptism today, and we'll be sharing a lot more about that as well. So I think we've got a, I think we've got a little slide that we can all um, say. If we've got the, the, the second one from the intro slide, so we can all join in with our, uh, our exuberance in a sort of you know, contained, led, directed form. It's the one that says Alleluia on it, just as a, just as a heads up, um, right at the beginning. Okay, well, do you know what? I don't think we need, because you know, all you need to know for this bit is, is to say the words Alleluia. Uh, so I think, we'll, I think we'll remember that. So I'm going to say Christ is risen, and then you can say Christ is risen, Alleluia, Alleluia. But what I'm thinking would be quite fun is if, if we start on this side, and this side does the first Alleluia, you guys do the second and you do the third. And what you're trying to do is get louder every time. And we'll see how that goes. So, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so very good, very good. So, we know what we've got to be now. So, we're going to start this side, go here and then. So, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. 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 I think they've got the numbers on their side. Okay. Um, <laughs> Last one. Christ is risen. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, fantastic. Well, let me let me pray. Um, Jesus Christ, we are here to celebrate you rising from the dead. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Thank you that that means the same in every uh, tongue across the world. And we praise you this morning. We are. Um, it is a gift to be able to be together in your name. I pray, especially for those who are maybe just feeling far from you this morning or not quite sure what this is all about. Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself as you revealed yourself to Mary and the first disciples um, as the risen Christ. Would you reveal yourself to us this morning as we praise your name, as we hear what it means to follow you and witness um, the wonder of baptism and those being joined into our church family. Um, so we just pray that you would have your way with us this morning. Amen. Well, if you'd like to stand, if you're comfortable able to, and we are going to sing our first song of praise.
sing praises a little bit. Um, now we're going to have a moment of our baptism candidates sharing their story, but before we do, there's a little Easter challenge that we're going to be doing throughout our time, and there are some eggs, uh, paper eggs, that will become chocolate at the end of the service. Um, um, and there are three different sections, and I believe that the first ones are blue, um, which I believe is this side. So if any little people, just in the next two minutes, want to see how many blue eggs they can find and bring to this table, um, and then the more that you get, the more that it will equal uh, chocolate. So you can, I don't know if we've got a picture of the, uh, the blue egg so that people know what a blue egg looks like. Uh, but if not, I'm sure they'll be able to find it. So, go! And as you're doing that, could I invite Melissa and Emma to come up and join me? I believe they're just in that section there. That's right, those are our coloured eggs that we've been covering in this order. So if you're, if you're adults and you're around some coloured eggs, then do, um, do help them out. Um, Emma, I'm going to need you, Emma at the front, and, uh, and Melissa, is Melissa here? Well, Natalie's going to, yeah, do come forward, Natalie's got a video, so that's fine, but if anyone's near Emma, because she's so excited about the, uh, maybe she's coming forward, we need you, Emma. Yeah, I know you're excited about the eggs, but you've got something else to do right now. Um, okay. So, I wonder if we could just hit a, hit a buzz on the, uh, the base there. Um, so, I'm going to invite Emma, Melissa, and Mel is going to do a little show your story interview to hear, to hear why these guys want to be baptized today. So I'm going to hand it over to Mel. I think that's probably enough on the challenge now, so if you want to come back and find your seats, that's wonderful. If you want to pop them, pop all your eggs on the table here.
And next we're going to have a video from Natalie. Natalie, just stand up and wave. I'm going to make you stand up and wave so that people know that you're here. And so we recorded this a couple of days ago. So this is Natalie's story. Well, Natalie, we're so excited that you're reaffirming your baptism vows today. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about why you want to do that. Um, I was baptised as a baby, but I've been in and out throughout my life because of different situations and circumstances um, happening in my life. And as baptism is a public confession of faith and commitment to Jesus, I want to reaffirm as an adult my commitment to Jesus and his church. I choose to follow him as my Lord and Saviour. This is a natural progression for me and an important foundation for my continued journey in Christian faith. That's wonderful. And maybe you could just share a little bit about, about that journey of faith and its significant moments for you. Yeah, um, looking back throughout my life, I've realised there have been quite a few moments of encountering God. The first being at my primary school, Christchurch, CV in Chelsea, where church and Christian values and faith were an everyday part of our schooling. My teens, I went twice to Billy Graham, and the second visit, uh, I felt a um, compulsion to go forward. More recently, again in the last three years, David prayed for me outside of Wilson's school to help heal some of my health issues. Then my son's journey into faith and being baptised. Um, popcorn and ponder, new wine, uh, singing, church, singing in church and being overcome by emotion um, and strong feelings. And watching the shack understanding the evening traumatic circumstances um, he was doing a little. Oh, that's amazing. And perhaps you could just share a little bit about the difference that Jesus makes to you now. Alright, well, I'm far from perfect. I still have my ups and downs. But through his atonements, teachings, and hope and peace, he has helped me start to make changes in my life. <laughs> Face trials and move forward in my faith. Following his light and example brings me. Happiness and peace, even when times are tough. I know that God's plans are what's best for me. I know that where, wherever God leads me in life, His plans are good. Led me this day for the next step in my faith journey. I believe that Jesus died for me and has forgiven my sins. I'm thankful to be getting baptized today and I'm blessed to share it with my family, friends, and church family. Since meeting Jules and you, David, and then joining Springfield, my life has changed. I have purpose and passion in life that I didn't have before. And with all your love, kindness and help, I've learned what it truly means to love Jesus, and I can't imagine my life without him. He has become more important to me since realising how lost I actually was without him. And every day in all situations, I know that I am loved unconditionally in very special ways. Natalie, thank you so much for sharing, and we're so excited that we're going to be welcoming you into the church family today. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much, Natalie. So, last but not least, my name buddy, Melissa. <laughs> so, Melissa, tell us a little bit about what's brought you to this place today to get baptised. To the meal meditation group, and I met a lovely group of people. Um, when I found out that their church was called Springfield, I felt like it was God calling to me, as I had a chat in the Springfield church help me to arrange my daughter's funeral, and God was calling me and reminding me. I was only going to the group for a few months, and I fell ill with my mental health. When I had my dad visit me in hospital, then one day Wendy and Jean also came up to see me in hospital, which cheered me up and I thought how kind these ladies were. Then David came to see me with a lovely card and, and everybody's signatures from the church and the group. And I realised that although I'd only been going to church and group for a couple of months, these kind people had accepted me as part of their church family. I've also been learning about Jesus at Popcorn and Ponder and his disciples, um, which inspired me as I was touched by Jesus' kindness he showed by washing his disciples' feet and when he stuck up for the women. <laughs> The more I learned about 
Jesus, the more it inspired me to read my Bible and to pray. And after the Alpha calls, I chose to get baptised. My good friend Flo gave me support and would help me to pray over the phone. As I suffer from mental health and depression, but I've learned that if I pray, it actually stops me from crying. So I have been coming to church for two years. I'm so grateful to Jesus for dying on the cross to forgive us from our sins. I also want to be part of the Springfield Church family. I'm grateful to be one of God's children and a follower of Jesus. And actually, one of my most uh, memorable moments in our popcorn group was when we watched a whole series of Jesus standing up for, for women. The woman at the, the well, the woman who uh, uh, was uh, washing his feet, all sorts of things. Um, and Melissa suddenly stood up at the end of one of our videos and said, I really like this Jesus, he stands up for women. Which is true, he does. Well, isn't it a privilege to hear those stories? Um, so thank you so much for sharing. And if I could invite uh, the three of you to, to come back up now, because we are going to uh, say some promises and uh, start the, the baptism re affirmation baptism now. So if you could pop to the next slide. So we believe that baptism is something that happens for the whole church, and we baptize, baptize adults wanting to make a profession of faith, and also uh, today we are reaffirming the baptism of vows for those who were baptized as a child and have come to Christ now and want to reconnect with that. So Melissa is going to be baptized for the first time, and then um, Natalie and Emma are reaffirming their baptism vows. And baptism, as we've um, already heard a little bit about, it marks the beginning of the journey with Christ that we continue for the rest of our lives. And it is a moment of stepping in to the promises of God. And whenever we do a baptism, I'm always really excited because it, for those of us here who have also been baptized, it's a chance for us to remember the promises that we've made and to step into it and reconnect. And for those of us who haven't, it's a chance to see what it's all about. And baptism is full of symbolism and meaning um, and um, if you're coming in and you're thinking, why have we got a, a tank over there? Um, why is that important? Well, there are many uh, things. Uh, that, that's the sort of water tank, not like a. Not, that's not like an army tank that's sort of coming through the window. Um, the, I like to think of baptism in a few different B's, uh, different letter B's. Um, so if anyone could just shout out uh, some that uh, you might remember from before. Belonging. Belonging. So, I can now could rely on you, Rosie. Uh, belonging, it's a, it's, this is a way of stepping into the church family, of becoming part of both Springfield um, and the worldwide family of faith. Um, so, belonging is a really important part. Anyone else? Born again. Birth, born again. It's sort of like they came straight at me together with the same kind of meaning. So, yes, it's um, uh, being, being born again, being washed in the waters. Uh, we believe that um, the baptism waters carry a special significance, being washed clean of all of our sins, um, having that fresh start, um, and uh, that is uh, just an incredible part of it. Any more? Baptized. Baptized is a good word. I think that kind of covers everything. So, yeah, wonderful. Any more bees? Believing. Believing. Okay, fantastic. So this is a moment where we say yes to Jesus. We say we believe um, the, uh, what Jesus has done for us, and we want to say yes to that. Um, and it's definitely a space of blessing. And the, uh, the Baptist of Morton is an absolute place of blessing. So I think we've, I think we've probably covered those things. But I think the, um, the, the sense that you go down into the waters, like you're going into the, into the tomb with Christ on, on Good Friday. And then when you come out of the waters, like the resurrection of Christ. Um, so that's the symbolism there, and um, so it's absolutely wonderful. We could, we could spend all morning unpacking that, but I think you want to get on with it, don't we? So, all the words will be here. Anything that you have to say will be in yellow, 
Um, and I'm going to start asking you a question, which you can already see what that question is. And if I don't feel like you're giving enough gusto, uh, then I'll just ask you to do it again and really mean it. So, um, but I think you're already in fine voice. So, um, but this is, baptism is for all of us, um, not just for those who are welcoming to the church family. So, I will say now, faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Emma, Natalie, Melissa, and uphold them in his new life in Christ? In the power of God, we I'm convinced. You've got some good support there, guys. So we're good. We're good. Wonderful. I'm going to swap places with you just so that I'm the online people. Hello, everyone online. <laughs> Welcome to the, the service. Now, we get to the decision. This is where I'm going to ask you some questions and you're going to make some, some decisions and some promises. So, let me begin. We all wander far from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask, do you turn away from sin? I do. No voices. Do you reject evil? I do. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I do. Do you trust in him as Lord? I do. Phew. Wonderful. Well, we're now going to sign you with a sign, sign of the cross with oil blessed and set aside for this purpose. I can get in. Melissa, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. And that Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. And there are some words for us to encourage them with. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. We say together, Stand bravely with Christ against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. And sometimes at this point we pray over the water, but we actually did that earlier on, um, just so we set aside anointed with the Holy Spirit for this purpose. And we've added some, a few droplets of water from the River Jordan where we were there last summer um, to connect with the, uh, the place where Jesus had his very own baptism. Now it's time for all of us to uh, profess what we believed. So it's a chance for us to speak out the faith um, that you're being baptised into. And everyone else, feel, please feel free to join in if you're able to. So the words will be on the screen. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right? I think it might be time to get wet, David. <laughs> Wonderful. So if, um, if people would like to see, maybe little people would like to go onto the carpets over there, and anyone would like to, to gather around, if, if um, I could ask Russ just to move the camera uh, before we do that. Um, so that it's not a, a, a battle for those online to be able to see. Uh, but do, do stand up or, um, or gather around and find a place that they are able to see.
gather around if you if you want to, or if you can see where you are, that's great. Who's, uh, who's up first? Anna. Anna. Wonderful. Oh. oh, it's just like a warm bar.
I pray that you would know yourself as a pollinator for Christ's love, sharing it wherever you go. Thank you that you are known by him. Um, would you be just a bringer of joy and be blessed every day of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. have a final bit of welcoming to do, but we'll do that once everyone's changed. So for now, I'm going to hand over to the band, we're going to continue in worship, if we can uh, put the screen back, and then these guys will be back after they've changed, and so we can do our welcoming on your feet.
Um, if you are wanting to get more involved in Springfield Church family, if you've been part of things for a while, or um, you are, if this is your first time and you're thinking, oh wow, this is, this is a group of people I really want to be a part of, um, I can see that just a few of your eyes. Um, then these are the ways that you can do that. So pray, group, give, team. PGGT, if you, you know, if, for short, if you like. Um, but pray, we're all about praying. There's various ways that we can do that. Um, I want to give a heads up that on the 7th, Sunday the 7th, next Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we will be meeting here. A really important time of discerning what God is saying um, for this season ahead, especially as uh, church leaders meet at the end of April um, for, a, for a vision morning and um, to see what God is saying for this next season. So uh, pray first, really important, join a group. We have lots of different midweek groups. We have groups happening over at the Bangor Way Community Center, like Mila Meditation, some of the people getting baptized today connected through Springfield in those groups. Um, groups for young people, um, and uh, so please do, if you uh, don't yet have one of those white flyers that tell you lots of things going on, on your way out, make sure you grab one of those. Uh, giving financially, we do have a read at the back if you want to do that, and also serving in a team, finding a team to be part of. Um, a lot sort of takes, uh, requires a lot of um, people to make things happen as a church family, um, and so it's a great way of finding your place. Um, particularly for uh, sort of technology things at the moment, set up, uh, sound, projection, all that kind of stuff. We'd love for people to be part of that. And um, the, uh, the other moment we can pray, if we go to the next slide, is that we have mission, uh, prayer, and persecuted church uh, prayer uh, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. at the Bowens. Could a Bowen raise their hand um, over here? It's just a half wave. Um, so if you don't know where to go, speak to them. But again, um, it's really important that we uh, pray for our mission partners and our persecuted church family. So lots of opportunities to pray, and there's many more if you go to the website to find any more details. Um, have we got all of our candidates back? So wonderful. Shall we, shall we welcome our back to the candidates? Here's something prepared earlier. Wonderful. If we can get the, the welcoming slide, that'd be wonderful. These are some Bibles as a, a gift to continue your journey with Christ. So there you go. Um, some words of blessing in the card. Um, so not that one. There's a just. It would have been just after the um, the the songs that we have. Yeah, that's it. Wonderful. So we've got some words that we're going to say all together. Have we got it now? Fantastic. So again, this is all about, this is a really great moment to remember why we're doing this and we're welcoming you to the church family. So, I will say, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. And let's say together, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can go find your seats now and you can congratulate them all later. That's absolutely amazing. Well, we are now going to um, have our reading, which today is in the form of a video. Um, in Popcorn and Ponder, we go through the, the Bible in video form and then discuss it afterwards. So, this is just a little snippet of what we've been doing on Wednesday afternoons. Um, and if we can hit that, that would be great. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going into the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples.
Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Wonderful. I'm going to invite Mel back up and she's going to share a message with us on that. Mel, could I pray for you? Lord God, we thank you for Mel and what you've put on our hearts to share this morning. And I pray that you would open our hearts to the wonder of your resurrection. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Um, so there will be some slides, but actually uh, you're going to be my visuals for my talk in a moment. <laughs> um, so uh, first of all, I realise I don't think I said I'm Mel. I am uh, the pioneer curate here, which means trainee vicar. And in case you're wondering who that other bloke is, he's the pioneer vicar. <laughs> and it's really good to have you here, especially if you're new. So we've had a great time already, and we haven't even really started talking about Easter yet. So we're just going to spend a few moments talking about what this day is all about. Our Easter series that we're in at the moment is called, How Is This Love? And there's an awful lot of difficult things that happened in that Easter story. And today particularly, um, as we remember, as we saw in the video, that the time when Jesus' friends went to the tomb in which he was buried, and when they got there, it was totally empty. So we're asking today, how can an empty tomb be loved? Now before we get into the detail of all of that, I need nine volunteers. And what you need to be able to do is hold a piece of paper and stand at different places in this room, and you need to be able to hold a bit of wool as well at the same time. So who thinks they can do that? Okay, so do you want to, maybe if you go there near the baptism pool, please. And maybe if you go in that corner, near the, the speaker at the back. Uh, do you want to go over there by Roger and Alan, by that door? What way does it go? Might have to go the other way, Jonah. <laughs> uh, black, please, the black boy should be showing. Uh, you can go over there by the uh, music group. Um, maybe... One of you could go at the back by that door there where Mary is standing. How are we doing? One of you could go just by the tomb. Do you want to go and stand by the tomb? And one of you could go in the middle of this aisle here, halfway down. Um, and maybe one by the clock at the back. And I need one more person. <laughs> Uh, maybe by the uh, altar there, by that cross. Thank you. What's this all about, they ask. So if you can make sure that you're showing the uh, words that are black, so these words are double-sided. So the thing about life is that bad stuff happens. And that can make us feel bad and can make things go wrong. And one of the things that could happen is that we can feel a sense of failure. So that's what this word says over here. So if you can hang on to that, and I'm going to try and walk and talk and unravel wool at the same time. We'll see how that goes. And sometimes life can get a bit messy, and so we feel worried. If you hold to that screen as well, I'm going to duck under here. Sometimes we can feel hurt. Okay, can you hold the wall? And let's go mad. And let's say, can you pass that piece of wool all the way over there to where it says sadness? So we might need to pass it down a few rows. Maybe pull it a bit tighter because it's up in the air, Jonah. I'm going to try not to break my neck. Who's that doing? <laughs> so 
So sadness, and we'll do an easy one, we'll go up just here. I've got lights to leave us, there you go. So that one says, weak, <coughs> weak. Oh. Oh, I've already done enough exercise today, this is... <laughs> in our life and it can leave us, so just a reminder of what those words say, it can leave us feeling weak, it can leave us feeling that we're under a lot of peer pressure to be a certain way, it can leave us feeling hurt by the things that have happened to us, it can feel, leave us feeling that we have shame, it can leave us feeling that we have fear, we're fearful that we're worried, that maybe we have a sense of failure, we feel judged, or we feel sad. And you can probably add other words that have come into your life, and that's normal life. Life sometimes goes wrong, and we feel like that sometimes. But what can happen is that we can get tangled up in those things, that we can get stuck in those feelings. Most of the time we work through, stuff happens, we start feeling good again. But sometimes we feel that we're totally tangled in our fear and in peer pressure and in hurt and that we can't get out, that we're being held back and that it's hard to flourish and really enjoy life. And that was true in Jesus' time and it's true now. But there's good news. That's what Easter was all about to help us not be trapped. So just, just as we talk, have a think about what might be ensnaring you, what might be trapping you. And what happened to Easter when Jesus died, we thought about that on Friday, he didn't just die as a human, he was a human, but other than something else happened that was supernatural and cosmic and really beyond our understanding. He died a horrible death, but when he died at that moment, some supernatural things happened. First of all, everything happened has had been prophesied hundreds of years earlier. How weird is that? When he died, the whole sky went totally black. And when he died, the temple, which had a curtain in the most holy place, the curtain spontaneously ripped from the bottom to the top. But the most amazing thing had happened by the time we get to Sunday. And as you saw in that video, when his mates went off to, to the tomb to be sad and remember him, and they found that that tomb was empty. Uh, have you got some scissors? So over here, while Jules gets her act together, here is 
The tomb that we made in Wellbeing and Wonder, that's one of our groups, and a group of amazing women weaved this tomb together as they talked about their own stories. And on Friday, those of you that came, you weaved your prayers into the tomb. And so let's open the tomb, Jules. We're going to symbolically, the tomb is now opening from bottom to top. And that empty tomb means so many different things. But the supernatural thing that happened, because Jesus was no longer dead, he'd risen, and as we saw in the video, people saw him. Over 500 people saw him come back to life. So we know he's God. And what that was all about is it freed us up to reconnect with God. And when we reconnect with God, all those things that ensnare us get snipped away. And these tangled things that are all our feelings that are holding us back from flourishing, from thriving, from remembering our joy at living, from delighting in our friends and family, and for hoping for the future, they all get released so that we are no longer trapped and stuck. If you're still stuck in your bit of wool, feel free to detach yourself. And not only that, those things that are holding us back don't just disappear, but they turn into something else. So our weakness gets transformed into strength. Peer pressure can be turned into a sense of security because we know we're loved by God. Our hurt can be replaced by love, the love of God. Our shame can be washed away so that we're confident to be ourselves, our real selves, made by God. Our fear can vanish to be replaced by trust. Our worry can turn into peace that God will be with us no whatever happens. Our failure can be turned into our ability to lean in to the plans that God has to prosper us. And that sense of being judged can be replaced by security in, again, being us. And our sadness can be turned into joy. And so, that might be the first time that you've ever heard anything like that. It might be something that you've known a long time, but are realising now you're tangled up in something. But on this day in particular, we're remembering that because that tomb was empty and Jesus had come back to life, we can be filled. So we have the option, if we want to take it, to be filled by God's love, by his hope, by his joy, by his peace, by his everything. And so I'm going to suggest as we go through the next rest of the service, you might want to think what's holding you back. Maybe in your heart, ask God to snip it away. And when we come to communion, I've cut a few threads of wool and put it by the two. So after communion, you might want to go pick up a piece of thread and drop it again as the sense that you're handing over the things that are tangled to God. And thank you, volunteers. I see you've already turned your page around. Hope is restored. So let me just say a little prayer. Father God, we thank you for the miraculous news that your God came to, your, your son came to die for us, came back to life, and we're free and disentangled from the things that hold us back. And whenever we get stuck, we can just ask us to help ask you to help us again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Mel. Liz Messer, we're now going to
have a time of receiving communion, the bread and wine together. Just going to... Why don't you just take uh, one minute just to say hello to the person next to you, if you haven't done already. Just make sure everyone feels welcome.
Um, and so this is just another really important symbolic way of us entering into the story, entering into Christ's death and resurrection that we may be filled and sustained. Um, so we have uh, these words of invitation. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It has been made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. Amen. And if I could invite those coming to serve. Thank you. 
kisses his body. Let's say these words together. 
as a way of thanking God for receiving communion. Faithful God, we thank you for the bread and wine, reminding us that in Jesus we have the good news of hope and love. Send us into the world to share that hope and love with others. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have our closing song. I believe there is just one more colour of eggs to find in this area, yellow ones, that you can bring to the front and during that time. So let's stand if we're comfortable able to as we sing praise to the Lord. Oh, happy day.
And I pray the blessing of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit upon all of you. May you know God's resurrection power. May you know um, all of the things that hold you down, that get you entangled. Would you know that Jesus Christ sets you free from all of them? And he wants to um, just you to know that you are loved by him. And so, Lord Jesus, we pray that when we um, come to give an account for our lives, we would know you as our Lord and Savior. Um, so bless us in your mighty name, and thank you for the joy of this time, we pray. Amen. 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 Wonderful. So do head through that door um, to get your teas and coffees, and we'll come back through here. Anyone who can help put the room back a little bit or with a tank, anything like that, would be amazing. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. joined us online it is great to have you with us praying huge blessing upon you and uh, hope to see you again bye bye